just cross my trail. I say, I ain't superstitious. Black cat cross my trail. I don't sweep me with no room. I just might get put in jail. I say, I ain't superstitious. Cat just cross my trail. Well, Superstitious, cats just cross my trail. Woman don't sweep me with no I just might get put in jail. Right hand is it, get me some money for show. Uh, Lord, my right hand, get me some money for show. I'm about to apologize. Somebody got to go.
So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. How are you out there? All right? This year ain't superstitious, and I'm tune that was put together by the great Willie Dixon, recorded by Mr. Chester Arthur Burnett from Aberdeen, Mississippi, a.k.a. the Howling Wolf. So uh, this is the 13th year that we've been having this blues fest, and they said, you know, the 13th is, our, is it's like superstitious, you understand? So we dedicate this entire set in behalf of the late great Howling Wolf, and I got a lot of guests on the show with me today. And we, we, our main reason for being here is to have some fun and uh, remember the old man because he kept the tradition alive for a long time. Yeah. Right.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. You're so wonderful. And right now. It's about time for all of my colleagues to get together. We're going to do a little hoop out of here. They got time to do their own thing. How about it for the band? On keyboard, formerly with the Howlin' Wolf Band, ladies and gents, his name is Emory Williams, Jr. We call him Detroit. How about it for Detroit, Jr.? Give it up. The bass player has been with me for 21 years. From the west side of Chicago, his name is Shorty Gilbert, the bass player. Give it up for Shorty. And on alto saxophone from downtown in the spaghetti bowl of Chicago, his name is Michael Peepy. Peepy. And on drums from the west side of Chicago, Timothy Taylor, TT. And on lead guitar, ladies and gents, he's from my house. His name is the same as mine, it's my son, Eddie Shaw Jr. on guitar. Guitar from Sharon, Pennsylvania, Blue Max. Give it up. And right now is my time for special guest of the afternoon. A young man that worked with the Howlin' Wolf for 26 years. 13 years we worked together with the band, but he was there 13 years before I got there. And we've been out of a lot of venues together. We stayed in a lot of hotels and motels together. And he still, he lives in Milwaukee, but he's still one of my best friends, ladies and gents. Originally from Arkansas, his name is Hubert Summers. Give it up for Hubert. Hubert. Another young man that worked with the Howlin' Wolf even before I got there. He also worked with Freddie King. He worked with Albert Collins. He's a legend, tenor saxophonist. From the south side of Chicago, Mr. Al Block. Give it up for Al Block. Al Block. All right. Al Block, right? And from the far south side of Chicago, Mr. Jukebox Man himself, my friend for the last 30 years. He keep on driving, trying to keep the blues tradition alive. Ladies and gents, Lil Smokey Smothers, give it up.
now. And now we're going to turn it over to Hubert. Let him do something in his own right. He's a legend in his own lifetime. We've been working together for a lot of time. How about it for the legendary Hubert Summers? Give it up. Give it up.
something, ladies and gentlemen. Just give it up, give it up, give it up. Yeah. Let you dog me around. A lady sitting out there, she said, forever. Am I right? Okay. Hey. Yeah. Okay.
Well, baby, I just feel like lying down. Hey. 
ladies and gents, I give it up, give it up! Yeah, how about it?
Thank you very much, my special guest. And now we'd like to change it up. From the west side of Chicago, ladies and gents, one of the finest blues basics has been around for a lot of years, played with all of the greats. We're going to change the bass band. From the west side of Chicago, Mr. Robert Mojo Elam on bass. Give it up. Thank you. On the harmonica, ladies and gents, from the west side of Chicago, Mr. Lester Mad Dog Davenport. Yeah. Now, from Chicago, by the way, of Tempe, Arizona, flew in today, worked with the Howlin' Wolf, worked with Eddie Shaw and the Wolf Gang. He's been around a long time, singing and playing the blues. His name is Chico Chisholm on the drums. How about it for Chico? Chico. Yes. Yes. So we're gonna... We're gonna try to get a thing going on. Yeah. First. Right now, without any further delay, ladies and gents. How about it for Mad Dog, Luster, and Gavin Poor? Give it up. Give it up.
Superstition series here, and we are having a good time, and we truly hope that we have played a tune or so that has brought some happiness into your life. All right, all right. Right now, ladies and gents, how about it from the West Side, my friend, Mr. Robert Amojo Eva. Give it up. Give it up.
club of queen the tight Leaders they call them fine girls on the fight so long and uh, things sometimes don't go as well as you want them to go and uh, the time uh, really ceases to be no more since I've been told by the sound people but before we go we want to do let Chico Chisholm do a little bit we were so sorry that we cut Mojo short because he's my best friend from the west side so come in how about another round of applause for him ladies and gents how about how about but you know, you know, we've been out here playing these blues for a long time. And if we, uh, if we don't do it today, we're going to do it tomorrow and the next day and the next day because we're going to keep this blues tradition alive as long as possible. But before, before we go away, a little bit from Brother Chico Chisholm and then we got to get out of here because the time has ran out on us and, and a great friend of mine, Mr. Lonnie Brooks and his band are going to come and close it up. But right now... Chico, Chico, get ready. We're going to do a little bit for you. We're going to do a little tune by the great whoop, the killing floor, the key of E. All right. Oh. 
Judaism. Thank you. Robert Mojo Elam. Detroit Junior. Michael Peter. Blue Max. Good night, everybody. We're going to go. We got to go. Just heard a rousing set uh, from Eddie Shaw and the Wolfgang. It's kind of like a reunion of people who all worked at one point uh, for Howlin' Wolf, the band all back together again. And you can tell these guys really know each other. Uh, it was uh, a reunion. It's interesting that when the photographers um, came up front, they all seemed to gather when more of the players who played with Howlin' Wolf were in front than the photographers were like a swarm saying, let's get all these guys together. Well, here we are. I'm Richard Steele with Chris Heim at the 1996 Chicago Blues Festival, and the party is going on. And it will continue. In fact, we will be back in just a moment with a conversation with two of the musicians that you heard, Eddie Shaw, the leader of the Wolf Gang, and also Lester Davenport. So stay with us for that. And, of course, we still got a grand finale coming up with Lonnie Brooks. You are listening to the 13th Annual Chicago Blues Festival live from Grant Park here in Chicago. This is the WBEZ 1996 Chicago Blues Festival Radio Network. You've got the best seat in the house for the Chicago Blues Festival by tuning in here at 91.5 FM. This is Chicago's public radio station, WBEZ Chicago. We'll return to Grant Park in just a few moments for much more of the 1996 Chicago Blues Festival, live from the Petrillo Music Show here in Chicago. This is a good opportunity to thank all of the members of WBEZ who are making this broadcast possible. Without your support, we couldn't bring you the Chicago Blues Festival. Later on this evening, after 10 o'clock, following the festival, we'll bring you a special broadcast of Afropop Worldwide with Georges Colonnais. And then Larry Smith will be in an hour earlier with an early start of Jazz Forum. That's at 11 o'clock tonight. Don't forget, the Blues Festival continues on Saturday night and Sunday night. Our broadcast will start at 5 p.m. then. There's much more now to come. Back to Grant Park and the Blues Festival broadcast live here on WBEZ Chicago. Well, here we are back in Grant Park in Chicago for the 1996 Chicago Blues Festival. I'm Richard Steele with Chris Hine, and as we promised, we have uh, two of the most um, energetic blues men that I've ever seen who just put on an incredible set. We'd like to say hello to uh, Eddie Shaw and Hi. Lester Davenport. Hi, Richard. Uh, listen, this was kind of like a reunion. I was just telling Chris a moment ago that when uh, the majority of you guys who have played together over the years got together and... Uh, the photographers came up front like, boy, we got to get this picture, if, yeah. if, if no other picture. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's, uh, it's like once in a lifetime thing. Uh, we all love one another and we've been together. You know, but in this business, 
we don't get together to really participate or play with one another in a long time. And so when we do congregate together, we try to have a good time. And uh, people like to get an everlasting image of what we're doing now, you understand? Because uh, you don't know in the future, hey, we, we may not do it again. So they like to capture all of this as of now. And we, we, we've had a good time today. The set tonight was also a tribute to Howlin' Wolf and all of you who had a chance to, to work with him throughout your careers. Yeah. If, there, if there's a particular memory or, or something about him that really captures the spirit of Wolf, what, what would you say it is? <laughs> I would say from 1955 to 1960. That's when the Wolf was really hot. You know, and uh, like I played with him for a while, but not too long. But I was always around, you know. And uh, it's particular, a particular, you know, music type of music. I enjoy, it, you know. And I hung around till I got a chance to play with him. And he had me, you know. At that time, I was playing drums, you know. And uh, I would sit in whenever I could, you know. He let me sit in, and uh, I got to be good. And uh, and uh, when Earl Phillip got sick, he called me. Yeah, yeah. So that was the highlight of my life when he called me. Yeah. <laughs> the drum for Now, uh, Eddie, you uh, uh, you were first, I guess, kind of discovered by by Muddy, right? Yeah. And then and then later on, you joined the Wolf. Right. Well, I was uh, going to a little school called Mississippi Vocational College in uh, Ada Bena, Mississippi, and Muddy played there um, uh, nineteen and uh, in fifty eight, and I joined the band, and I came back to Chicago uh, out of school with Muddy. And I played two years. I went back to Mississippi. Uh, and I was assistant uh, band director at a little local high school, and then back to Chicago, where I joined up with Howlin' Wolf. And I was in and out, in and out of the band, from Wolf, uh, Muddy, Otis Rush, Magic Sam, and all those guys for a long time. And then I, I, collectively, I played with Wolf for 13 years. So it was a highlight of my life. Uh, he taught me a lot about respect and dignity and and stuff like that. He was a uh, he was a legend in his time. Let me ask you this: What what uh, made you think that okay, uh, the wolf is gone? Uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be Eddie Shaw and um, and and the Wolf Gang and and see if we can still get these blues out here to people and get them to absorb it. And did you think that without the name Howlin' Wolf, uh, you'd still get that kind of response? What well, what did you think when you first started well, with that? Well. Actually, I, I started Eddie Shaw and the Wolf Gang before Wolf died because there was a time when Wolf had a heart attack and uh, the band had to keep on working. He was in the hospital, so I take the band on the road several times with Eddie Shaw and the Wolf Gang. Now, everybody knows the same band. And uh, Wolf was six for, for a while, and he would say, Eddie, uh, take the band and, and go to work. So after he, um, his, last, his last day or so, the last day, I guess, of his life, I, I was in the hospital. I went and uh, shaved him and got him everything together. And he uh, and we reminisced about this. And I've been keeping the tradition of going all the time. And, you know, uh, wow, there's nothing that I can say wrong about the man. He taught me a lot. And he is the reason that I am really out here on the highway now, trying to keep this tradition alive. Let me ask you, I guess, as a final question about that tradition, because because both of you really do, in many ways, carry on that tradition of, of Chicago blues and, and the sound that Howlin' Wolf and, and other Chicago artists help create. What's what's the state of it? Can we keep it going? How how do people respond to it now? Well, let's, well, uh, I I like to say uh, the blues is 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 more alive now than ever. It's going to be alive, and we can we can. Uh, give the credit to Chester Arthur Burnett, Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, who really paid their dues, the, uh, playing in all the uh, chitlin' joints. We call it uh, the chitlin' circus at that time. And at that time, you play on a Friday and Saturday, and the week was shot. And if it rained on the weekend, maybe you had nothing coming. And they worked on and on and hard to keep that alive. And that's what out here now, what you hear today by all of these guys is what Wolf and Muddy kept the door open for them. And what we are trying to do now is teach the, the young musician coming up something about the blues, you know, because the blues, we are feel is going to be here. Regardless of what come in next year or the next year, the blues is here to stay and it's going to be here. So if we can teach the young musician how to play the blues and what the blues about, we're going to keep it alive.
and that's what we are working for to keep the blues alive. It's interesting. You have there are two there are two different there are two groups of people. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, but distinct groups. There's a group of young guys who are 25, 26 years old, who are who are playing the blues and who are really uh, learning about the history of the blues and connecting with people like yourselves. Uh, and then there's a very small group of people, um, say in Billy Branch's age bracket, who maybe about 40, but that group is pretty small. But it, it, it is encouraging because there there's so many at that real young end. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you're right. Um, well, I tell you, as the years go by, some of the old guys uh, stop playing, uh, or descending, coming down, uh, and we. It's good to have. The guys like Billy Branch and uh, Sun Seals and those guys in that age period to keep it going. And now we got a young crop of guys that are, uh, it's hard to find young guys that really deep down in their heart want to do some blues. You know, they want to do some disco and they want to do some rap. But once in a while you go to a town and you come across one or two guys that's sincere about playing the blues. Those are the guys that we want to keep going for. Now you had some R and B days too. Now you better believe it, baby. <laughs> you uh, did you, did you did some time? You did some time with Sam Cooke, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did that. But uh, uh, in this in this business, this music business, to make a payday, uh, you work with everybody once upon a while, upon a time. You know, you you when, you when you're freelancing, you work with every guy that come along to bring the bread home, and I've done that. So. Uh, and I'm still out here, you know, I'm getting a little old, I'm getting a little uh, gray up above and thick around the middle, but I'm, I'm, hanging, I'm hanging on, Richard. <laughs> Lester Davenport, you, you are self-taught, aren't you? Yeah, I taught myself. So what made you one day say, well, I think I'll teach myself how to play the harmonica? How well, did that happen? What happened, when I said four or five years old, I got a harmonica in my Christmas stock. And I started playing it, and I, I, at that time, I was sitting and listening to the radio. Now, was this the, while you were still in Mississippi before you well, moved to Chicago? I was still Chicago? in Mississippi then. Uh -huh. I said, I listened to the radio. And I blow along with the radio, you know. And uh, I got to know the sounds and uh, know the keys, and, and it was sounding like the radio. Well, I did that for years, just playing to myself, you know, and learning different songs. I didn't start playing professionally until I came to Chicago.